Welcome back to Mrzinski Family Homestead. How y'all doing? Uh, so that was a lot of work that we did last week with the, um, as far as dumping the water, draining the water out of this tank and dumping it into the other one. And it took us forever. So me and my husband got to thinking and what did we come up with? Well, we got a 12 volt uh, water pump that runs off 12 volt so you can run it off your car battery or we got the car battery for backup but we got another battery that came off of my car hauler trailer which stays fully charged. I keep it fully charged constantly just in case if anybody needs it but um, I actually took it off the trailer and I got it here in the back of the truck and it's about a, it's about the size of like a dump truck battery or like a battery you would have in a tractor trailer <laughs> so it, it'll last a long period of time so we're gonna use, we're gonna take the power out of that battery before we decide to even hook it to the truck battery now this pump that we have what what do you what do you know about it what what can you tell everybody about it <clears throat> well I really we actually were looking and a lot of them we were finding was just like a you know 120 AC you know just when put you it plug yeah, into a socket yeah one you plug into the wall AC adapter and uh, out of the blue we found one and they had it in stock so we just picked it up we got it at Harbor Freight uh, we do have a Harbor Freight that just came to town, so we were shocked about that. But anyway. Now this is a non-submerbable, -sub like you can't put it in the water. It's a transfer pump. It's, it's a transfer pump is, yeah, is what it is. So you, you don't put the pump in the water. You, put, you hook a hose to the one side, you put it in to the tank, and then the hose coming out the other side, you can use the water something or transfer water to another location all right now this pump it it, it pumps 290 gallons per hour so that's pretty much what we got in the tank <clears throat> yeah about 275 we got so um and like the maximum head the head height like it won't pump up it, 40 it'll, feet it'll it, it'll pump up like the max is 40 feet yeah you you yeah so basically if you're 40 foot lower like where we're standing at if we go that way i mean we're not going to be 40 feet but i'm just as ex expression it'll it'll pull 40 feet in on an incline so if you have like an incline of 40 feet or less you can have good. yeah you, you should be good so it's able to pull uphill so uh, we're just gonna try it out and see how it works I mean if it don't work we'll take it back but uh, I'm pretty sure work. I'm pretty sure for uh, how often we're gonna use it it'll probably be sufficient because we did get another uh, what was it, about 600 gallon uh, water tank 575 gallons something like that uh, that's was, gonna be put out here for permanent use yeah it's gonna be yeah for permanent use and we got that for free it was given to us but it does it does have a few holes in the bottom of it and we're just gonna have to patch it so we didn't yeah. have the time to patch the holes yet to do that so we just got this RIBC tote filled with water in the back of the truck <clears throat> and uh, we're gonna pump and water the garden with this, and then whatever's left over and remaining, we're gonna put it in the, the other container, which is 100 gallons. And you can pretty much water the garden twice, pretty good with the 100 gallons. Uh, but the problem is now, we're not getting no rain. So we have to haul water out here every time we come out here to water, so, uh, or every other time. So that's why we were going to get, that's why we got the bigger tank to hold water. And we were thinking about putting it up underneath like a canopy. So if it does rain, we can use that runoff rainwater to fill the tank back up. And the tank we got from one of y'all subscribers, which we really appreciate, that actually has a rain catchment system already built into it. 
so it, when it does rain it'll fill it up a little bit which uh, it only has about a two foot circle circumference so if it rains two inches you might get two inches in the tank I mean I it ain't gonna extremely fill it up with two inches of rain just say um, so it would be nice to put some kind of uh, like roof over it to get more of a circumference of the rain to drain into it but we haven't got to that point yet all right well let's get this thing hooked up and let's see what it will do uh, for the IBC tote we did mention this in one of our other videos but this is dealing with the garden and we're going to be using this IBC to tote a lot so I thought I'd re-mention it if in case y'all never watched the other video but uh I did get an adapter for the IBC tote. It's a gator lock adapter. Uh, basically, you just push the buttons, <coughs> you, open, you slide it on there, and you pop it shut. For the IBC totes, they're two inches, so you need a two inch adapter, gator lock, and then we reduced it two times to put a three quarter inch hose connector on the end with a valve. So basically, after we hook this gator lock on, we pull the lever on the on the IBC tote, keep the water flow to this area, and then we can shut it on and off just with the with the hose adapter. I just wanted to run that by you real quick. But we did get this at Tractor Supply. They do have it. In, you know, they have these in stock. So if you were looking for a gator lock for an IBC tote, the, pl the place to go get it is Tractor Supply, and it was reasonable. I think it was like fourteen dollars for all this stuff. It wasn't that much money. So it was, you know, it's worth it. Gotta do it both at the same time. I know that, but I was just trying to figure it out. Didn't I do it this way last time? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, really, it doesn't matter. Well, I have to get the hose on there, and it has to... Oh, yeah. Here, can you... Can yep. you pull? It might be easier pulling the bottom one first because the bottom one's gonna be banging. Alright, right, it's locked on there. Alright. Since this thing is filled with water and uh it's in the back of the truck and it's not over the tailgate um, you're limited on space for the bottom and how this is set up so I have to put it on an angle so I have room for the hose to be able to because if you put it this way you I wouldn't have enough room it would be at 90 degree angle and it could kink the hose hooking it up so I just put it on an angle which ain't gonna ain't gonna uh, change anything with the water coming out, other than maybe here, but it's gonna be pretty much empty by that time. So uh, you'll be able to move it and finagle it around, and then you can put it the other way or take this off and just drain the rest out. However you want to do it. So this is this is gonna get everything, but probably 25 gallons out of it, if that. All right, and uh, we're gonna unbox this thing and see what we got. There's the, there's the instructions, they go to the side. I need those. Now this, this, if you're gonna transfer out of, you know, out of this tank, if you wanna do it this, uh, the other way, you have to drop this down into the tank and it'll suck the water through here and go to the hose that comes out. And uh, you could do it that way. We're, we're most likely we're not going to be using this right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and here is the motor, which is very, you know, it ain't ginormous, but I'm trying to get it out of this bag here. All right, this, this is the motor. There's gonna be an inlet and an exit. So you gotta make sure you got that, you have to make sure you get that right. So uh, right there. What was gonna say? Well, I don't know what it says right now. I'll, I'll, get, I'll, back, I'll get back to that. But anyway, um, 
these are the connectors it comes with. Just, just, just basically, you know, jumper cable kind of stuff. You know, you hook it to the battery, and that's it. Now this thing does have a switch on it. It, it has an on and off switch on an inline on and off switch so you don't have to disconnect it from the battery to stop working just hit the off switch and also uh it only has about six feet of cable so if you want to run a, a distance like as in pulling power from a battery um the farther distance you go the thicker gauge wire you would need so basically uh in case i need to pull from the truck my truck is 20 foot long um, I would literally, I actually bought, when I was there at Harbor Freight, I bought uh, jumper cables, 20 foot long, but they're made out of two gauge wire. You know, the, the smaller gauge wire is thicker, like the smaller number, the thicker the wire, the bigger number, the thinner the wire. So basically, the more distance you pull power from, the thicker gauge wire you would want. So I got, I got the, the biggest, you know, the 20 foot long was the longest I found. They came at a two, two gauge wire, and you're better off to have the thicker gauge wire um, just because, you know, if you have too thin of a wire, it'll create too much heat in the wire. The, the wire will get too hot. So the thicker gauge wire is more ideal for pulling power for a little bit of a distance. And even for a shorter, you know, 10 or 20, 10 or 15 feet, you know, you still want a thicker gauge wire. I mean, maybe a, a four gauge or, you know, even you can still use a two gauge for that, that, that short of a distance. But, you know, the, th the thicker the gauge wire, you're better off and it'll be more successful and less heat in the wire for pulling power. <clears throat> so we do have, how long is that? Six foot. About six six foot of hose. We got six foot of hose. So what I want to do here, I'm going to take this the female end and hook it to the male end of the IBC tote. I need to look at it. And we don't have another female. Unless no, I don't know if we'll be able to do that. We might have to, we might have to finagle something. I don't have All right, y'all, now we just found this out. All right, I got a male end on the end of this IBC tote. I got two male ends on here. I only got one female end here. So basically I would need two female ends on, on this hose so, to, to make this work the way that we were just talking about trying to make it work. So, how do you want to do it? We're going to have to run it into the daggum tank Hi. with this the sucker thingy. Yeah. Alright y'all, so since we ran into that little hiccup, we will get this thing going the right way and we'll get another, um, some more male ends. Female. Or female. We'll get some more female ends. And, um, we but, gotta, we're going to adapt, we're going to, I guess, just cut this and put a, fem a female on this end. So we got a female on that end and a female on this end. So we can hook the female here, the female here, and then just hook another female here and pull a male end on the hose. Yep. This regular hose. All right, so we are going to use this today. We're going to um, set the pump up on top of the tank and then run the hose down in there. And with this, it's a tight rubber fitting. Yeah, it doesn't screw in or it anything. It doesn't screw just in, it, it just there. pushes on. And hopefully that... That should, that, that should work. Set that up there. Yeah, let me take this lid off. Ouch! Don't, it says on here, do not pump flammable liquids. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would create a, a bomb, probably. <laughs> Alright, so that's in the tank. You just gotta connect that up. 
and I'll set it up here on top. All right, that's the outlet over here. The outlet's over here, so the inlet's over on this side. Yep. So basically, it goes this way. Got a rubber gasket. It does come with a rubber gasket. Some, some hoses don't come with it. Alright, let me get the other hose. Come here. Yeah. Alright, hold the hose up so they can shake them out. 